Happy Draft Week, Bengals fans. This is the Orange and Black Insider Bengals podcast. I am Anthony Cazenza, joined by my usual co-host, John Sheeran. And as is part of our dra- ongoing draft coverage for this week, we have a very special guest, Mr. Dahani Jones, joining us right in the middle. Two two thorns surrounding with the rose in the middle. How you doing, Mr. Jones? I'm doing all right. Thanks for having me on the show. You see, you see my see my jersey over there. Yeah, make sure, yeah. Make sure, who, make sure I frame that? that appropriately, huh? Yeah, who is that in the picture? You were telling us that, before, that, but that's a young, that's a younger Dahani, right? Okay. Uh, with no hair and <laughs> definitely no gray hair. Okay, and uh, that's a, a more polished Dahani with a, a refined uh, President Barack Obama while I was presenting him my my Bengals jersey. So. Um, I know a lot of people like to keep their jerseys, but I figure since it's, it's the president, I, I just I gotta give him one. So very cool, very cool, and just just totally emphasizes the fact that you are the NFL's version of the most interesting man in the world, TV star, philanthropist, NFL star. Happy to have you with us, sir. I know you're promoting a couple of different causes, and we want to get to that a little bit, but. I uh, want to for, first of all, you doing all right through the, all this COVID stuff? It's it's definitely a, a different landscape around the world right now you, you hanging in there you you keeping busy i'm sure you are obviously with the flames yeah. and stuff but i i think um you know my mom you know, or anybody else has really said you know how do you make you know lemonade you know it's, it's yeah. like, how do you take those lemons and make lemonade um i think one of the things that i've realized that out of the last 24 25 years of my life i've always been on the road and now i'm able to be home so it's sort of like a, a fresh opportunity to kind of just really see what home life is all about, yeah. right? Because even from from college, you know, traveling, playing, uh, playing football, you're gone every two weeks. And the pros, you're gone either every week or every other week, depending upon the schedule. Off season, you're traveling back and forth. And now, in terms of like the world of business, whether you're on the road or whether you're on airplanes or you're just meeting people, you're always on the go. And this is an opportunity to kind of stay in one spot. Get reacclimatized, and um, there's another thing that someone someone said is like the world is going to be completely different after we come out of our our quarantine, if you will, mm-hmm. right? So you too should be different. So spend time getting to know yourself just as much as you're getting to know your family or anybody else uh, during your during your time. But come out of this and 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 almost take what you've learned and transcend that into a better you, a better version of you. And I think that's that lemonade that I'm talking about out of these lemons. Well, you are doing something, a a great cause. You're here to promote a couple, which is the bow tie cause as well as when you founded back in 2010, but also the give together. Now you are heavily involved. They're raising a lot of money for needy families. Definitely want to hear about that. And if our listeners and Bengals fans can can help rally around those causes. We definitely want to do that. This show is very passionate about nonprofit endeavors. So definitely want to do that. Before we we hear more about that, kind of want to talk to you about your your interesting professional path. Uh, you you definitely have carved a, a really cool niche out for yourself. I guess we'll start from the Bengals side, if that's all right <laughs> with you. Um, that's fine. You know, you, you were at the time a little, you, you had played in the NFC East and then you landed with the, the Cincinnati Bengals. The thing I think that I wanted to start with, that 2009 squad, you had come on to the Bengals in 08. That 2009 squad kind of was this, you know, amalgam of different players from different backgrounds, and a lot of people did not think that that team would be very good. They were featured on Hard Knocks because the personalities like yourself, and they ended up, lo and behold, going 10-6, and six, sweeping the AFC North. You were a gigantic part of that. What do you think was kind of the galvanizing force behind that team and that success? Well, I, I think that you know, I was fortunate enough to to come into the to the Bengals um, and be surrounded by some some good players and, and a lot of leaders that were just tired of it. They were just tired of losing, and we just decided why don't we just go out there and win and prove to everybody that we actually have some ability on this team, and that's what we did. And Marvin Lewis was behind us in that effort and gave us enough latitude and, and room to to be better um our you know every, everybody on the team just bonded together I, I think that's the most important piece in what we were able to do as a team and granted it was only my second year there and I was just trying to figure it out trying to figure out where I fit in and so from a linebacker position you know I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about from a 
the TV show that was last night with Michael Jordan talking about the, the uh-huh. last dance. I was just saying to myself, this is my last dance. Now let's go out there and let's win. And I fortunately was able to play a couple more years with the Bengals, but every year I approached it in the same way. Let's, let's utilize all, everything that we possibly can to go out there and win and look at everybody in the eye and say, look, we, we are a successful team and we can actually do more than what people probably think that we, the, um, that we can. So was it that mindset that allowed you to grow into the player that you were with the Bengals? Because it's, it's kind of rare for, I, I think, for, pe- for players to be long-term veterans, but then to kind of leave the game when they're at the top of their game. And I think you were at, at your best when you were with the Bengals. So what really developed as your career went on that allowed you to become the player in Cincinnati as you were? Because honestly, when you look back at the recent history of linebackers for the Bengals, you're, you're pretty much at the top of the list there. Oh, I, well, I, I appreciate that. I think, um, you know, when I got to Cincinnati, I just realized that there was an opportunity to sort of rewrite my story, right? I, I, I loved playing for the Giants. I enjoyed playing for the Eagles and going to the Super Bowl. But there was something else very, very powerful about the city of Cincinnati. There was something powerful about the, the team and the Bengals. And there was something in the back of my mind about my age and what people had said, right? So it's, I think it's a culmination of that chip on my shoulder and, and the chasm and the dark cloud and everything else. And now it's aligned and saying, okay, let's go out there and, and win. Let's take all the lessons. Like, I think you know, you're never putting it into, you're never put into any situation you really can't handle. It's how do you identify what have you learned in the past in order to allow you how to handle what, the, what situation you're in. And so I took everything from my past history of football and every place of where I was and in, 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 uh, as a player and just magnified that on, onto the field and just refocused. And uh, that is what allowed me to kind of find my way, find my way through. And, you know, a couple arguments here or there, a couple fights here or there. If you came to a couple practices, you could, you could hear me hooting and hollering. You know, I, I kind of had like, like we're we're gonna do this. I don't care what you guys say, and we did, and so it was fun. That was a that was a really fun year from hard knocks all the way through the success of the of the season. It was. What are they gonna? It, what are they it was gonna a hell of a lot of fun. Hard knocks. When are they gonna replay it? I, I want to see. I want to see the the younger, less gray Dahani Jones. You know, uh, at, at at training camp. I'm sh- I'm sure you could still suit up and and knock around with the best of them. I'm sure. I'm sure. Talking with Mister Dahani Jones. Ten-year NFL veteran linebacker, former Cincinnati Bengal, and uh, philanthropist, TV star. Stoked to have you with us, sir. He is joined. Uh, he's joining us courtesy of New Era Caps. As you can see, they've got a new set of Bengals draft gear out. Go get yours as the NFL draft approaches this weekend. Dahani, just kind of talking a little bit more about this, the the 2009 Bengals and your success with the team. You, statistically speaking, you had some of your best seasons with the Cincinnati Bengals from 08 through through 2010. You were the, the team basically had two coaches, Mike Zimmer, Marvin Lewis, defensive guys, longtime NFL guys. How much do you credit not only the team's success but your personal success with the Bengals to those two guys? Even though they're you know they're not really with the Bengals anymore, but still near and dear to a lot of fans' hearts. Uh, well, I have to number one credit Marvin Lewis because. Um, you know, I actually was able to join the Bengals as a result of being on the uh, on the New Orleans Saints, and I was up there for practice. And he saw he saw how I practiced, and he was like, "Man, he he still he still got it." And then I got released from the Saints, and then they brought me over. So I have a a lot of credit and a lot of respect for Marvin Lewis for recognizing such talent. You know, <laughs> um, um, and and I'm appreciative for the opportunity to play for him. But Mike Zimmer. You know, when he came in, you know, we, we, we butt heads like this. And that's when we realized that we could actually do something together instead if we decide not to bump heads, but just to kind of flow together. And although we didn't always agree on everything, we both had that winning like attitude. And um, Mike just reinvigorated something with, within me that just made the game a lot different. Right. And mm-hmm. I think playing for Mike, Playing for, for playing for Mar- Marvin, um, and just being in a different headspace. You know, as a, as an NFL player, you go through transitions. Your you know your first couple of years, you're still trying to figure it out, and that's when I was in New York. 
And then you kind of go through this repositioning of who you are as a, as a player. And that's when I was dealing with my sort of second contract in Philadelphia. But when I got to, to Cincinnati, I, I had figured out a lot of things about myself, the way I wanted to play, um, how I thought on the field, how I thought off the field, and it just started to congeal. And so it was all of my own personal growth, as well as um, the lessons and the partnership, not only with the team, but also with Mike and also Marvin. It's, it's this mentality. It's, it's this, like you said, mental landscape that I think has been plaguing the, the Bengals specifically at the linebacker position for the years since you left. And I think it, now transitioning more to like the current state of the Bengals, what do you think has been their problem at addressing this position? Is it just not finding the guys who are just capable of taking all these tasks or maybe it's an athleticism problem or what's really been the issue with the Bengals in addressing the linebacker position and how do you think they can improve upon that? Well, I, I think it's always, I think it's the culmination of a couple of things. One, you have to look at free agency. How do you identify really a good player that you can bring in to be a part of the team? Two, I think it's the notion of the draft. I mean, how do you determine who you're going to go, go offense or defense? And there's been so many different choices and to be honest, uh, when you're going into the draft, you can have as much information as you as you can have as possible. But until that player comes to play in the season, you don't know what's going to happen, right? And then now with uh, you know with Zach being the new coach, you have a, a a new era of leadership, right? So it's an era of leadership. It's the um, where you're identifying your free agents, and then also going into the draft. All three of those things have to align perfectly. And it doesn't always happen that way, right? And so you hope every year, and I know Mike Brown hopes every year that he's made the right decisions and that he's make the he's he's added the right people to the team so that they can go out and win. Donnie, you you know you you talked about Zach Taylor and this now now it's a much different coaching philosophy, much different system with this team now than it was when you were under Marvin and, and Mike, uh, you know, kind of the defensive first type of type of mentality. I mean, just, I, I don't know how close of a pulse you've been keeping on the Bengals and, and obviously they've got the number one pick. So that's kind of a lot of uh, what's on right. a lot of people's minds, but I mean, what do you, what do you make of the, of the direction Zach Taylor has this team heading in? They had a productive free agency. They've they're set to maybe take Joe Burrow. You're a defensive guy. You maybe see the offensive coaches. I don't know. Is this just, kind of where the NFL is going. They want to get that young offensive minded coach. And that's, that's that. Or do you see that this is heading in a right direction, even coming off of a two win season? Well, number one, I think that anytime you have a leadership shift, there's going to be a uh, time that's necessary to re to rebuild, right? Regardless if you call it rebuilding or adding, or, or there's any different ways you can kind of scramble up the words, mm -hmm. right? Zach is, coach is going to be a lot different than what Marvin Lewis was. So you got to give him time. Um, you know, I talk to Gino all the time and, you know, as long as he's keep doing, doing work on, on the line, I think that there's a, there's ultimate success and reward to be reaped as a result of his leadership. Um, but the attitude of the team is going to come down to sort of like the fire that's um, breathed into the into the organization as they go for that number one draft pick, right? And I think everybody's really looking forward to that, and they're and they're on they're on the edge, saying, "Okay, who's it going to be? And what type of energy is that person going to bring?" Going back to the last dance, right, with Michael Jordan, when he came from Carolina, he came with a certain bravado and a type of attitude, a type of leadership that changed the entire Bulls organization. One person can do that, right? And so. Cincinnati is waiting for that person to galvanize the team to your point and all and 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 add value as well as um, continue to to grow the, the to grow the organization and hopefully this this will be that year. I'm really glad that you mentioned Geno Atkins and Carlos or Geno Atkins and because also Carlos Dunlap was a rookie that year as well in, in your last year at Cincinnati. Did you see something in, in both of them that year that that doesn't surprise you now that? They're just still playing at a really high level, or are are you are you just as surprised as, as anybody that guys who are taken outside the first round are still really really successful ten years into their career? Well, I've got good stories about both of them, but <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll leave I'll leave them on the field. I will say this: Gino was always this quiet ball of muscle that you just couldn't stop. Carlos, I think, grew into the role and responsibility that he now has as a leader on the defense. 
Um, and each person has arrived at a great place in the right amount of time and has produced. And so um, I remember when, when they came in and, you know, I was a, I was, I was old, I was old head, if you will. So if you ask them stories about me, I, I'm, I'm sure you'll get some probably some funny ones. Talking with Dahani Jones, courtesy of New Era Caps, talking about his football career. We're going to transition in a minute to his TV career and what he's doing now on the philanthropic side. Happy to have him with us. Uh, I don't know. You mentioned before we took the air that you live in Michigan. I'm sure you still follow Michigan Wolverines football pretty closely. Uh, some of the guys that uh, maybe you're coming into this year's class, I think Josh Ucci is one that uh, a lot of Bengals fans have some some eyes on as a as a rotational piece up front. Uh, how do you see a guy like that maybe fitting in with the Bengals and or other Wolverines that are entering the draft that could be good fits for the team? Well, I know that anybody that comes from the greatest university in the world, the <laughs> University of Michigan, is going to immediately provide provide value. So we'll see who who the Bengals yep. end up picking up. But I'm always supportive of any player that's come from come from Michigan because we've essentially played on a pro team. Yep. I mean, we have 125,000 people that are out there. I mean, at least the last couple of years, who knows what's going to happen this year? Are we going to actually see football from the stands or it's all going to be via television and via streaming and any other types of uh, uh, method of technology? But I'm, I'm excited to see how many people go, you know, top three rounds and, and really make an impact next year. I've always maintained this personality where I've always thought, you don't know what's going to happen with the player their first year. I always call it a wash, right? I I always wait to see what happens the second and the third year. Now, that may not be sort of conventional because people want people to perform now, but I believe um, that some some universities, not University of Michigan, it takes a while to acclimatize. Um, and you just have to be able to give players enough time. But people don't have that, you know, people don't have a, a sense of waiting any longer. It's like, what are you doing for me right now? Dahani, you you were on a program transitioning a little bit. Dahani tackles the globe and not blowing smoke. I I love that show. I thought it was awesome. Um, before, well, I guess I guess I'll ask, what was the most difficult sport that you can remember <laughs> participating? And there's one that I specifically remember on an episode. You were in an Asian country. I don't know if you were like in Singapore or what, but you were doing martial arts, and it was about a hundred plus degrees, and the humidity was around the same amount of percentage. And I remember you were just like, oh my gosh, this is exhausting. I, To me, the, I would think that that would be maybe the most grueling. Um, but I know you, I, I think you were in Scotland doing their their Highland Games. You were doing uh, water polo in, in Eastern Europe, uh, which was another cool episode. I don't know. What, what's one where you're like, oh man, that was the most grueling <laughs> or this was, the, you know, this, this sport was maybe the most fun I've had outside of football, that sort of thing. Well, they, look, they were, they were all difficult in their own right. Uh, whether it was hiking to the base camp of Mount Everest in Nepal yeah. or sailing in New Zealand on America's Cup boat, or like you're talking about, whether it was Cambodia um, doing That's what was. Surrey, yeah. right? Or whether it was in Thailand doing Muay Thai. I mean, all, all of it was tough. But I think all of those different experiences and all the people that I met along the way, all the different sports I played, I think it actually added to my overall base as an athlete when I came back to play for the for the Bengals. So I love doing it. I want them to bring the show back. If if they brought the show back, it would help me because I could I could get in even that much better shape. Maybe some of this gray hair that I keep talking about would would go away and it just go back to nice brown silky hair. But you know, we'll we'll, we'll see what happens. But it was some of the best time that I ever had, and I and I always talk fondly about being able to travel around the world, and I talk fondly about playing for the Bengals at the same time because I was finally able to do that delicate dance of what I was passionate about off the field as well as what I was passionate on the field and to have an owner like Mike Brown that supported that and to have a community in Cincinnati that's where that as well um, I was glad to be uh, productive on the field I was glad to make tackles and make interceptions and 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 lead the defensive unit that just made me happy so um, I love tra traveling around the world. If they if they uh, call me up and ask me to do it again right now, I'm taking it. Donnie, you I and I I would I would love it. I would uh, love to see that show 
make a reappearance. I, w- I watched it pretty religiously, and I'm not blowing smoke and saying that. I really liked it. Seriously. I appreciate was, that. Why, what was the impetus behind, you know, how did that come about where the, the creation of that, you know, uh, in terms of contacting network executives and, and creating the show? How did that? Yeah, it was. Well, I had I had relationships with uh, several production companies beforehand, right? And I was doing some stuff on ESPN. I was doing stuff on NFL Network. And I was really one of the first players to have his own show while he was playing. And the, the production company that I had worked with were like, hey, do you want to travel around the world and play different sports? Um, I was like, okay, that sounds cool. I definitely want to do that. Then the general manager of the, of the network was uh, Travel Channel. Um, he said, you know, why don't you go out there and play rugby? And I knew exactly what that was. That was a setup to see <laughs> if, if football was tougher than rugby or rugby was yeah. tougher than football. And it was it was a choice that I had to make. And I said, you know, I, I would love to be able to do that. But I also realized what I was theoretically or potentially sacrificing if something did happen. And even the first episode, I fell off a horse and I thought I was going to get hurt. I didn't get hurt. And I knew right then and there that this show was one that I needed to do because I could not only showcase the world of football to the rest of the world, but I also could bring the world closer to the international sports that are that are on different continents. And so traveling became a, a great way to sort of bridge that that divide way before, this is this was just when the iPhone came out. Think about that, yeah. right? The iPhone came out mm-hmm. 2007, 2008, and the, sh- the show just kicked off during that about that time. I, we didn't even have half of the, the technology platforms. Um, television was the only way to do it. Now we can, you know, do it on StreamYard or whether we do it on, um, FaceTime or whether we we do it on, on Zoom. So if anything, if uh, any networks out there listening, oh, by the way, Scripps owned Travel Channel at the same time. So I was in Cincinnati. I was playing on the Bengals on one side of the highway and then working for the Scripps family <laughs> on the other side of the highway. So think about that. That was like the perfect deal. So yeah. we'll see what happens. Donnie, you are joining us courtesy of New Era Caps, and you are here to talk about a couple of different foundations that you were a, a part of. You helped found one of them, uh, about Bowtie Foundation. Uh, I know you want to talk about both. I don't know which one you want to start with, but I'm going to put up the website on our on our live cast here. We've got the on the interview post that we put up on CincyJungle.com. We've already got Bowtie Foundation linked, and we will link GiveTogetherNow.org as well. Yeah. But uh, you know, if you want to maybe talk about the Bowtie Foundation first, what you're doing there, and then we can talk about Give Together Now and and how Bengals fans, listeners of our show, can potentially help you out and get involved. Yeah, so I I'll, I'll I'll just kind of intertwine the two. Um, and going to University of Michigan, we always learned it's not about you, it's about something greater than yourself. And one of my friends had always told me, if you want to be somebody, you got to rock a bow tie. So I just kind of put the two together and said, let's make bow ties and support support causes. Um, you know, we've been able to work with, you know, 300 different nonprofits, companies, and corporations to tell their story through, through bow tie cause, and it supports the Bowtie Foundation. And where we're able to take some of those proceeds and give money to different nonprofit organizations, they're able to take those bow ties, sell them, and make money for their nonprofit organization. And so as I've continued sort of my philanthropic endeavors, right now there's a lot of people financially suffering through COVID-19. And um, uh, an organization that I, that I knew for a long time, stand together alongside with another nonprofit, um, Family Independence Initiative, uh, got together and they created Give Together Now. And if, if you go to that website, givetogethernow.org, you can see the amount of money we've been able to raise in, in the last couple of weeks. We've raised $30 million. Um, we've affected the lives of 60,000 families. And the money that's raised 100% go directly to the families that are in need. Um, it's 100% of the money. So $500 cash money goes right into the hands of families that essentially qualify. So if you go to givetogethernow.org, you can see that. And what I'm doing alongside with Give Together Now is that I'm doing an interview series called Stand Together Live. And we're interviewing people like Jimmy Chin, who who created the, the movie Free Solo. Mm-hmm. I interviewed Sean Johnson, who is an Olympic gold medalist, Nancy Lieberman. They call her, you know, Lady Magic. Um, I, have, I have a bunch of other people. Dean Nice, I interviewed him twice. Uh, and this is really a three-pronged approach. One, through Stand Together Live, 
Number one, we're raising awareness for Give Together Now so that families know that they can have access to this money. Number two, uh, we're giving people an opportunity to either give dollars or give acts of, of kindness. And number th and number three, um, we're you know these athletes, actors, actresses, um, um, influencers are giving people that are at home nuggets of in inspiration because while you know while we're going through the 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 most unprecedented times where we need people to be as close as possible, people are so far away. And so with that philanthropic mindset where Bowtie Cause focused on something that was different, I really found uh, the harmony between Stand Together and Family Independence Initiative and our partnership around Give Together Now to be a, a, a voice of advocate, advocacy so that so many people could receive cash in hand. Remember, 100% of the money goes to the families that are in need. Yeah, that's awesome. And like you said, making making lemonade out of lemons. And that's that's what you're doing. And you're doing an awesome job as as expect, as we've come to expect from you. Um, you you seem to be very successful, highly successful in really any kind of professional film or philanthropic endeavor that you you pursue. And that's uh, something to be admired for sure. This Dahani, this to be quite honest with you again, I don't want to blow smoke and I don't want to speak for my co-host here, but this I've been very much looking forward to having you on the show. Um really really just enjoyed who seeing you as a, as a football player and what you've done in communities and charitable works and, and stuff outside of football. Um, very, very pleased that you were able to join us. Thanks for carving out the time. Sorry if we've gone a little long. Um, no, we've, no, no, we've I, just I, enjoyed I, the conversation. So <laughs> no, no, I, no, I, I appreciate you both having me on the show. Um, and really thanks to so many people that are in the Cincinnati community for, um, allowing me to be who I am um, uh, and giving me an opportunity to play for an amazing city, an opportunity to get to know so many people that are so philanthropically oriented and to do business with with true partners has been a, a phenomenal experience. You know, from the first day I showed up in Cincinnati riding my bike, um, you know, everybody has essentially greeted me. And I think that's the that's Cincinnati. Right. So Joe Joe's out there listening. You know, Cincinnati is an amazing family where so many people are supporting you. Um, and for any other potential player that's coming to Cincinnati, um, you know, when you get there, you realize why it's such a, a, a powerful community. Albeit it's a, it's a small, it's a small, it's a small town, but it's got a, a uh, it's got a um, a national a national reach, and that's really the power. And um, I, I I can always say thank you to the Brown family for for bringing me on to the team and Marvin and, and Coach Mike for dealing with uh dealing deal, dealing with my antics as a, as an old head playing playing uh playing the game of football. Well, I, I think uh, you know we can e echo some of the sentiments in the in the live chats here. I mean, they're saying it's it's good to hear some positive things being said about the the team the ownership group all that kind of stuff i mean f people can be critical of of some things and there there are maybe some some legs to stand on in that front but you being a player seeing the inner workings and and playing for the team obviously um it, it is good to hear that you've had a positive experience with the team and with the brown family and i think a lot of players you know uh, have a similar path it, if you have any other professional en endeavors, either now that are better coming up, that, that you want to that that are maybe coming up that you want to tease us with, or if and when something else comes up, uh, you know that gets off the ground and you want to rejoin us down the road, we would love to have you back, man. No, 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 I, I I appreciate that, and I appreciate the opportunity to do so. I just you know right now while everybody is at home, um, just know that all the communities really need to come together. Um, and you know, I'm just trying to do my part through Give Together Now and help raise money, uh, promote acts of kindness, so that we can uh, distribute the capital to those families that are in need. And I, I would say the most important thing to everybody else, uh, to, to everybody as as well, when you're walking down the street, just smile at someone. Sometimes yeah. that's all that's all that people need, um, because there's a lot of people that are home, like myself, that have never been home this long. Um, but there's a, a, a lot of people that just want to feel as though they're a part of a, the community. And I, and I think that, um, as everybody's watching Anthony, thank you, John, thank you. Um, we can all get through this together.
Yeah. Well, this has been an immense pleasure. Seriously. I'm, I'm very, Absolutely. very, very stoked that you've been uh, able to join us. And like I said, open invitation, anytime you want to come back, hopefully you like Thank the streams. hopefully you like the stream yard platform. Hopefully that works. <laughs> I, like that it. Work. I like it. <laughs> well, appreciate you joining us. And uh, like I said, open invitation, anytime you want to come back on, we'd love to catch up with you and, and see how things are going. Stay well during this whole thing. Um, you know, I know it's kind of a weird time, but stay well and hope your loved ones stay well, stay well as also. All right. Thank you so much. And both of you stay safe. All right. Take it easy. Okay. That's Mr. Dahani Jones joining us, uh, pumping the Bowtie Foundation as well as givetogethernow.org. Um, John, pretty cool stuff. And, and I mean, to be expected with it, with a guy like that, right? I mean, he, we, we tell him 15 minutes, he, he gives us 30. Right. Um, I, it's, it's, it's cool for someone like me. Cause I, I saw him play dozens of games in Cincinnati and he was always fun to watch. Again, he's just one of the better players that I remember at that position. And, you know, you always hear stories about how these guys are locker room leaders and can galvanize younger men, but you can just see that in, in the way that he expresses himself and expresses all of his beliefs and whatnot. So great, great human, great player. Really glad we got, to, we got to have him on. Yeah, and I like some of your questions you asked him about Dunlap and Atkins, and um, you know, I didn't even kinda... think about that like beforehand. But yeah, that, like they he, they were rookies right as he left, and I just yeah, I don't, I don't imagine Geno's changed much, but I'm sure Dunlap did. I wish I wish he would have indulged us with some. He said he's got some stories that he's going to hang on to. I wish yeah. he would have indulged us on that, but um, that's okay. You got to keep the locker room stuff within within the camaraderie, I guess, and not, not spill the beans too much, but good stuff. Go, as I mentioned, you know, we've had a couple of uh, bigger names on the program lately, which is awesome. Dahani Jones being one go support he, these causes that we are promoting Dahani Jones is being the two that he, he brought us to, of course, because that's the kind of guy he is. But uh, you know, we had Anthony Munoz, the Munoz foundation, go support Bowtie foundation as well as give together now and, uh, you know, the Javante Woods Foundation, Icky Woods' son, we had him on on last week's show. Uh, so, you know, a lot of different foundations and nonprofits are in need. And a lot of – and the families that these nonprofits serve, John, they are in need of assistance right. and help. So, you know, if you're able to give, if you're able to volunteer, whatever the case may be, obviously keeping the social distancing stuff in in mind, um, I mean, now's the time to, to give. And I think you – you and I both donated to the Javante Woods Foundation, and and we'll continue to see how we can help out these other causes. Absolutely, and l like Dahani said, you know the world is going to change when this is all kind of blown over. But these these organizations they still need to exist, and they still need all the help they can get right now, so they can continue helping people when the world d d does change at the end of this. Yeah. Well, thanks to Mr. Dahani Jones joining us. Did you like how he put Mr. Jones as his uh, as his name there? Of course, solid uh, song, solid song choice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, join us courtesy of New Era Caps. You can see I'm wearing one of the new draft lids by New Era. So go wherever New Era products are sold and go get yourself some Bengals draft gear. Prep yourself for the upcoming weekend. Dahani Jones was part of our ongoing draft coverage. We had Anthony Munoz earlier on Monday. We have uh, Dahani Jones just now join us. And then we've got a special roundtable episode of all the Cincy Juggle podcasters. John will be definitely a part of that. So join that. That'll be probably Tuesday evening. We will have our regularly scheduled Wednesday show. I think right now we are scheduled to be joined by James Rapine now of Sports Illustrated. So we're excited about that. John and I will also be doing our final mock draft that evening. Um, John, John's going to uh, definitely show, show how much more he knows about the draft than I do because uh, he's, he's, a, he's a smart dude when it comes to the draft. So looking forward to that. And then, of course, We've got the draft coverage throughout the weekend. All of the stuff is going to be on cincyjungle.com that will have all kinds of different stuff aside from even what we're doing on the podcast. So you're going to want to keep it to cincyjungle.com. Great writers like John are part and parcel of the crew there. Anything else I'm missing, John? Anything else uh, I should announce? I'm, there's there's just so much going on. It's hard to keep up I with I think all. miraculously you did, you did cover it all. And this is, this is a great start to hopefully a good week. Yeah. Yep, stoked. And thanks, thanks for joining me today with, with Dahani, John. It was a lot of fun chatting with him. And we will see you all throughout the week. Subscribe to our channels. Get the audio. Get the video. Keep it to CincyJungle.com.